Next, we'll look at the VNS3 firewall. Under Connections, click Firewall. VNS3 firewall is another layer of security and control for your cloud-based deployments. VNS3 firewall features are controlled using IP table syntax. Make sure to check our administration guide for information about syntax. Also note that the order of rules matters. Rules are applied from top to bottom until first match. If no match is found, the packet is allowed to continue on. If your customer rule doesn't reject a packet, it will be allowed by default. But this default is a bit restrictive. Traffic is allowed from known VLANs. Known VLANs are VLANs listed in IP tunnel rules and VNS3 virtual LAN. So allowing traffic from other sources requires adding firewall rules to explicitly accept that traffic. Also note that firewall rules added to specific controllers are not automatically synced to other controllers if you have peered controllers. All right, so a couple examples of VNS3 firewall. If you want to drop all packets from one IP address to another, click Save and Activate to put your firewall rules into place. So now this rule tells VNS3 to drop all traffic from 192.168.3.0 slash 24 subnet except for the 192.168.3.11 IP address. A couple other examples, specifically for NAT-T, VNS3 lets you use your cloud VLAN just like you treat your home or office network and isolate it from inbound requests or services, but allows most outbound service requests. In this example, your VNS3 controller is a VLAN subnet, is in a VLAN subnet with a network from 172.31.1.0 through 255. Many clouds with VLAN capabilities map a public IP address to the private IP on ETH0. Here we're telling our VNS3 controller to masquerade the traffic coming from that subnet out to the internet and then return the response packets to the requesting machine. For an example for port forwarding, a common use case would be using Windows Remote Desktop on one of your cloud servers as a jump box, and then you want to remote all other cloud servers in your VPC. VNS3 lets you do this with your VPC just like you could from a home or office network. You can allow specific traffic from a specific source on a specific port to be forwarded to another machine. So using the same example network, we can assume a source network public IP of 69697070 from which the RDP client is running. So this tells you that NAT needs to be enabled. You should specify the port to be forwarded. In this case, we said RDP 399. And specify the machine for port 3389 traffic. Here it's 10.199.1.130 using the 2 syntax. And use the JDNAT syntax to specify destination network address translation. Next, we'll look at net mapping. Net mapping allows you to create IPsec tunnels to imaginary IPs on the VNS3 side, side of a connection. You can use the VNS3 firewall to map all traffic to and from the imaginary IP to the actual host on your cloud side. This is very useful in situations where a connecting party has an address overlap with your overlay or VLAN subnet. 